Hello. What are you up to? I am up to driving right now. That's about it. That is about it. <laughs> I got a question. <laughs> yes. Are you still with uh R what is it? R T I? Yep. Okay. How how long have you been driving for them so far? I started in April, mid April twenty nineteen. Twenty So a few tw- years now. Three years almost. Yeah, right. three years. But you was you driving for somebody else before them or was that the only company that you was driving for? all this time um no i was driving for a small company before that oh okay and doing it yeah i was just mom and pop companies uh that were contracted with amazon so i bounced between a couple of companies within a few year period back then all right well let's get into it Brittany in pink back in the building how you doing there driver Thank you. Thank you. I love the clap. Uh, I'm doing well. I am doing well. How about yourself? I am doing all right over here. I am rolling through the great state of Minnesota and um, and yeah, just just traveling on down the road. What about yourself? Where are you at? I am in the great land of Oz, floating <laughs> around the Midwest. <laughs> she, <laughs> said, she says, ah, usually my purview. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's uh let's get into it so Brittany and pink uh works for the company rti i believe that is riverside transport uh one of my subscribers spoiled hustler wanted me to do a uh make the call video uh spotlighting riverside transport and i said hmm you know what? Instead of talking to a recruiter at Riverside Transport, why don't I get the most popular uh, truck driver for Riverside Transport to talk about the company and what they got to offer? And here she is, Brittany in pink, the American trucker. You also, uh, you you also still drive the uh, the 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 pink. Uh, what is that? Cascadia. For them still or no? It, I drive the pink Volvo. Oh, the I'm pink. a Volvo girl. The Volvo. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Okay. Yes. I right. still drive it. It's uh, she's almost paid off. Like that. Yeah, I'm it, super stoked. I got like 11 months of payments. I think. Is that is is that your truck? Like your truck that you're yeah, actually well, buying your truck? Yes, oh. I am making payments on it, and she's almost paid off. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so let's start. Let, let's start with some of the uh, basics uh, with Riverside Transport. How how long have you been driving for them? So I started in April of 2019 with Riverside, doing the lease purchase option is what I went with. They do do company drivers as well. I've I've heard from some other drivers that like the company side. Um, I like the least purchase because I want the truck, especially the pink one. And uh, yeah, so a few years now, about just over three. All right, what what made you decide to 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 do lease purchase other than going into the company side? I wanted more options on my end because I I'd worked for a lot of little companies and some of them were great. Don't get me wrong, um, but. The last one kind of burned me, and I I was tired of being used and abused. And I'm sure you and everybody else can relate to that in transportation. Is sometimes, sometimes, not always, we are just a number, and they burn burn you out. I mean, they'll they'll run you until you have a heart attack and you're dead, and hire somebody else. And I I just hated that mentality. I wanted more options to control my life. That's what's up. That's what's up. So. Riverside Transport, where are they located at? They are in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, they're actually off of 32 Highway, Kansas Avenue there, um, kind of near the industrial areas. Would you Would you know how they... Um, they also... Go ahead. They also have an Owensboro um, uh, term. As our, we have a sister company 
TLI that I've heard good things about. And we kind of share terminals with them as well. I've never been, but I hear they're nice. All right. So, Brittany, how, how, How's the orientation? Like, you know, how how did they bring you up there? How was the orientation? If you if you can remember, how how did it go for you? How did it go for you and how would it be for other people that's interested in coming in? So a lot has changed since I was here because we went through COVID and they've kind of changed up how they do things. I'll tell you this. The first day I went, I was pissed off. I was pissed the fuck off. You might have to believe me. Pissed the fuck off. Um, the the lady they had filling in for orientation that day was grumpy, rude, and she's like, no, here's how it's going to go. You're going to get it. I was like, excuse me? So I didn't have a great first impression. I almost walked out, actually. Um, but I decided to stay uh, because I had spoken with... Uh, some others in the company and and it seemed great what well, i did because the rest of orientation was amazing um very personable lots of you know relatable things you could tell that they relate to the driver most of the people employed at rti are drivers or have been drivers before okay. and the rest of the experience was wonderful okay okay that's what's up that's what's up so that's what the that's what the new drivers is going to experience when they come in they go you know personable uh company that's going to be you know comparable to them you you think that uh that particular company uh for drivers that's that's looking to call home would be that company oh absolutely yeah it's um like I said, the only thing I've ever run into is if they have some person overworked that they threw into orientation to fill in that's not the norm, you know, I, I don't know. But my experience beyond that person was everybody else is tremendous. Um, they treated me like family. They know my name. Um, of course, now they all know me from the pink truck, right? But um, the others that have come aboard have, have told me that you know, how do they remember your name? Like, they, they call you by name, and you can actually talk to them. That's the thing. Like, when I was with another big nationwide trucking company years ago, my first company, one of the things I ran into was I would be dispatched on a tight load at 75 miles an hour through rush hour traffic. And I'm like, oh, you got to be fucking kidding me right now. Are you serious? The guy, dispatcher, had no freaking clue that you couldn't drive 75. Hell, my truck was covered at 64 at the time. <laughs> but long rush hour traffic, they just had no understanding, right? And I'm sure you've run into that um, in the past. So at RTI, it was night and day different. These, most of the people, they were working there, are like, they either grew up in transportation or they've driven before. And so when you say, hey, I'm heading into rush hour, I noticed we got some construction traffic. Oh, shit, I'm going to call ahead and get you some more room on this load to make sure, you know, that doesn't come back on any of us. Okay. Okay. So I really have the feeling that they have our back. Like they're really batting, like we're working together instead of, you know, having misunderstanding. Okay. Okay. How much, how much experience do, uh, do one need to come with RTI? It's one year with an acceptable driving record. Now, mind you, I'm not a recruiter, I'm just a driver, so I'm telling you what I know. Um, I don't think it's changed. But yeah, one year acceptable driving record, and um, yeah, that's pretty pretty well it. I mean, they're they're really easy going, to be honest with you. All right, and I, I, as well, opportunities they do have opportunities for company drivers and for drivers that's interested in lease purchase program, right? Absolutely. Um, I will say this. The re reason I felt comfortable taking the lease purchase program, because I had heard nightmares. And I, I know your feelings in the past on, on lease purchase for good reason. Uh, a lot of companies screw drivers over with that. So I would caution drivers, be careful if you're hunting for lease purchase. All right. But here, they have a walk, -a walk away lease option. So if you want to turn the truck back in, you can hand them the keys and you don't owe anything. Like, there's a early penalty, which is equal to, like, your last settlement. It's nothing major. Um, last paycheck. 
But other than that, you have the option to walk away. And I figured any company that's going to hold that standard, where if you don't like us, you know, you're welcome to leave. We're not going to, you know, no harm, no foul. I figure it's a good company. All right. So how how much longer you got on yours? And this pivotal question right here, I always wondered, like, after you pay for the truck and the company governed your truck at like 65 or whatever the case, but after you pay off the mm -hmm. truck, would, would they take the governor off? Ew, that's a good question. I don't know. I, I'm not a hundred percent on that. Um, I I will tell you this: before there was there was a period of time in 2020 where the CSA score dropped slightly, and they banned the ungoverning of the trucks. They they would bump the trucks up to like 75, 80 miles an hour when I started. So I don't know if they're still allowing that, even on lease purchase, where they can bump it up. Um, I know for a while they restricted it because of some speeding tickets um, that was stinging the company score. Okay, okay. But now, we're governed at 65. You can bump it up to 68 on the cruise control. Okay, okay. Now, being that you're a 1099 driver, you, 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 your benefits, you have to take care of yourself. But do you know on the company side what benefits that they offer? I don't know the details. But I do know they offer benefits, you know, dental. I believe they have some sort of retirement. Um, yeah, I, I know they do have benefits. And I will say this, they have, without naming customer names, which I'm restricted on, being a driver here. Actually, technically, I could probably get away with it because I don't have a signed contract. But I'll tell you this, major, major dedicated accounts all the way across the nation, multiple, every pretty much common shipping facility name you've heard of we have a dedicated account with as well as major retailers so if you're a part so if you're running otr for instance and maybe you run into those times where maybe you're out of position for a load well you can hop on a dedicated and go help them for a day or two and they'll keep you rolling okay so it's great to have that backup okay okay that's what's up now you being uh being a lease driver uh, are you able to uh, pick your own loads or do you get dispatched the loads? We get dispatched. So what happens, they'll send us a load proposal on our computer here in the truck. And we have an accept or decline button. And um, we make a choice on it. It's hard to do something like that on a dedicated. You kind of got to take what, you know, please the customer. But general OTR, you can pick what you don't want the load, don't take it. <laughs> and okay. they do back you on that, by the way. I tested them a couple of times. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. like, oh hell no, I'm not dealing with that lumper. Uh uh. <laughs> now, now how about how, how about what so of course there's a difference for the uh company driver. So do they do, are 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 they forced dispatched to, you know, on the company side, you know? Now I'll tell you this, I don't I don't 100% guarantee this because I don't have firsthand knowledge of it, but I've heard that it is not for this stop, even on the company side, which that's pretty tremendous. If that's true. All right. All right. Now, of course, you know, you being the lease driver for the, uh, for the company, you pretty much could go home anytime you want, but for a company driver, if, if, if you, if you know, uh, how often is their home time? Well, it kind of, I think a lot depends to you. I believe it's one day of home time for every week out officially, but I don't know how that works on local or regional um, on the company side. I will tell you if they're, if they're run, if they run out of the KC terminal, being in the middle of the country, they can, they're real good about being able to get you out and back because we have so many loads going to like Denver or Cleveland, Ohio, and then coming back, you know, so pretty well run a little loop around the midwest and come home if you want to be home more okay how often do they go up in the northeast and do you know if they get if if the company pay drivers extra for going up there <laughs> so you're getting a brutally honest driver right here um i i told him i refuse to go back to the east coast uh, so we run primarily 
our primarily our freight is east of I thirty five sector in the middle of the country. We do have some western stuff, but it's it's rarer. Pretty much Texas, Colorado, um, on east. So most of our freight is eastern, I would say. Um, but I'll tell you this: it was a few cents more a mile to go to the east coast. But here's where you get burned. You get burned on the fuel, especially on lease purchase side. Mm-hmm. So, because I'm not getting paid by the weight of the load, the the negotiated um, rate on the load, I'm getting paid per mile. And so, there's a give and take. In some situations, like in, here in the Midwest, where it's flat, I'm getting paid the surcharge. Fuel is cheap compared to California or um, the East Coast. Um, I come out ahead because um, it's not costing me as much, and I'm getting paid empty at a fixed rate per mile. So it doesn't matter to me if the low if the rate on the load is cheap. I'm still getting paid the same. I love it. You go east, so you're running maybe an eighty thousand pound load of like recycled paper or some shit, and next thing you know, it's costing you a dollar, two dollars more in the national average price of diesel, you're going in the hole. Like it I did not see six cents a mile or whatever they offer going to the East Coast is worth it to me. I'm like, oh hell no. <laughs> one two, one two. <laughs> oh you you hear me? Okay, okay. We we still good? Okay. Um being, we got that. being that you're uh being that you're a lease driver and everything for the company do you have uh, driver facing cameras in the truck? And if, and do you, well, do you have driver facing cameras in the truck as a lease driver? And do the company have driver facing cameras in their trucks? So on the company side, I don't believe the over the road trucks do. I think the local guys might. Um, but I can tell you on lease purchase, it is forward facing only, and I believe that's consistent with uh, over the road drivers. And they only kick on. They have a system. How it works is if if you like stop suddenly, slam on your brakes, or you're following within a half second of a car, it it has to be something ridiculous. But it will trigger an event, and then it will start recording at that time. So you really, it's not a big deal. It kind of protects you as well as a company should somebody cut you off and you couldn't stop you know so okay so i like it i have i have in cab cameras for those that see my youtube cameras are on me all the time and the reason for that was some of the crap that i was going through before some people that didn't like me called the company made false bad driving reports so i'm like you know what we're gonna fix this right now i'm gonna put three in cab cameras facing me so anytime somebody phones in a report i'm gonna release that company go no, really That's really not. i was texting and driving i was all over the road really <laughs> we have exactly. 15 cameras in here right now okay that's what's up that. and plus that shit in the bud <laughs> and, and, and plus that's a, a, another thing too because you know I, I i follow you on your youtube page and and, and your tiktok you pretty much out outfitted your truck for you know for you to just you know start you know just when you talk you just want to make sure you capture everything uh, that you can, you know, bring content out on your YouTube page, right? 100%. This is reality TV trucking that's actual reality because I am I have no script. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just capturing our life, and as you know, it's a crazy life out here. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, do Riverside Transport offers uh, a sign-on bonus? I believe it. I think it's a it, I've seen it different amounts before but I've seen it as high as 2000 I've seen it as little as like I think 500 or 1000 but I think there's a difference too with company and lease so you might want to check to see if you if, if, if you somebody looks into it you might want to check the website and see what they're offering and that kind of scared me too you've heard me rant about the sign on bonus thing to me, that's a red flag. If you're offering a mega sign-on bonus, I don't want to apply with you because, you know, that tells me you're desperate. <laughs> mm, that's um, RTI seems to be good with it. Um, however, 
you know, they, they've been a great company to me. So that's kind of been the one exception to that rule. All right. All right. Brittany. And and well, P- hey. Oh, go ahead. What'd you oh, say? I was just going to, I was just going to say, I, I do, um, you know, I'm just a driver here telling you my experience, but there are a few good lease companies, lease purchase companies out there. I've talked to quite a few drivers. And so, and they all run different types of freight. I mean, you've got some in flatbed. We don't do flatbed over here. We do dry van primarily. You've got some in reefer. We don't do a whole lot of reefer. Uh, so I would just encourage people to really, you know, uh, read the site, find out from the drivers what, what a good company is. Um, and just be educated. All right, y'all. There we have it. Brittany in pink for RTI Transport out of uh, Kansas City, Kansas? City, Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas. Yes, sir. Our, yes, sir. <laughs> now, for the people that for the people that will hear this podcast, uh, Brittany, do you have a, do you have a, you know, referral? Do, do you guys get credit for, for referrals or anything like that? We do. I, I believe the current rate is a thousand dollars per person referred, um, and I believe it's another thousand after the person stayed for six months. Okay. So I get a few occasionally. I don't. I don't try to push it. Okay. That's another red flag to me as a driver. If I hear somebody hey, mention my name, so I get paid. It's like really, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> but here you go, guys. You know, here you go. If you happen to come across this podcast and you're interested in rti uh make sure you say you know make sure you mention the lockout man podcast show and particularly Brittany and pink and uh and uh see what rti got for you how would how would one get in contact with rti after they listen to this podcast and they're interested in it i would say google them Check out their website. They've got a lot of really cool tools on the website where you can calculate uh, truck payments, estimated fuel rates. You can actually put the price of fuel in, estimate what the surcharge will be, and kind of find out what your profits will be based on the mileage. So I found it to be very accurate. All right. All right, guys. Brittany and Pink, thank you very much, Brittany, for coming on and sharing your experience with uh, RTI. I figure I would give Brittany a call and talk about the company. Then going to the actual recruiter, you guys got an actual driver that's been there for a couple of years. That's going, you know, that's going through a a good lease purchase program. But she also says that it's a good company as well you guys know that the best conversation starts over here at the lockout man podcast show this special mtc presentation with Brittany in pink the american trucker yo where can they find you Brittany? i would say just google me or look up Brit- Hall for pink Brittany pink truck uh crazy woman in a pink truck i mean pretty much anything you're gonna find me on youtube or google <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you guys have it. The American trucker, Brittany in pink. Again, guys, you want to know more about RTI, the information will be in the description below. Shout out to my subscriber that wanted to be interested in uh, RTI. There you have it. Hopefully that'll work. If you're interested, make sure you use Brittany's name and let them know that you heard it from the Lockout Men podcast show. And on that level and on that note, you guys take it easy. We are out of here. Peace.